Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. The Drone Pilot Association of Canada's Steering Committee held our June meeting last week. And here's a rundown on what we talked about. The Drone Pilot Association of Canada, or DPAC for short, is an advocacy group focused on benefiting recreational and small commercial drone and RC aircraft pilots. We offer free resources for learning about drone regulations and best practices, including particularly our free online drone safety course. There's a link to our website in the description below this video. Membership in DPAC is absolutely free, and there's a nice big join button on the website. In addition to the web resources, we host an active Facebook group where folks like you can ask questions and talk about issues that concern you. It's a safe and friendly place, closely moderated, where there's no such thing as a dumb question. If you're uncertain about something, there are bound to be others in the same boat. Droning is in Canada can be so complicated. The good news is that there are plenty of folks to help out. DPAC's a fairly informal organization with a six-person steering committee to keep our activities focused. We meet monthly using video conferencing. Here we are posing for a selfie. In the top left is Mike Hill from Kingston, Ontario. Then Nick Seemel in the top right on the beach in Nova Scotia. Across the bottom on the left is Jean Lamoureux in Gatineau, Quebec. Then Steve Bogner in Medicine Hat, Alberta. And Steve Bannister in Gimli, Manitoba. And here I am down in the corner hailing from the metropolis of Aaronsville, Ontario. We started our steering committee meeting by checking in on the membership numbers. 3,145 official members on our website and 8,303 on Facebook. We talked about the latest Drone Zone publication from Transport Canada and observed that the community of certified drone pilots doesn't seem to be growing as quickly as before. We wondered if this was due to the rapidly growing trend towards sub 250 gram drones, and it probably is. Now, if you fly one of these, as I do, I strongly encourage you to take the DPAC safety course to ensure you understand a bit more about what rules do apply to you. We then talked about insurance. We still haven't had any luck securing a drone liability insurance deal for recreational pilots. We keep trying though. So at the moment, one of the best deals out there is still through COPA, even though you need to become a member of COPA to benefit from their insurance rates. If you can help out with drone insurance, please let me know. Another challenge we're facing is finding a new volunteer webmaster to help support our website. If you have experience with WordPress-based web pages and have time to help us out, please contact us at Drone Pilot Association of Canada at gmail.com. It'd be great if you also had experience with a tool called LearnDash to help out with our coursework. Any fees associated with these tools are covered by DPAC. All we need is your expertise, time, and enthusiasm, not your wallet. Our next quarterly newsletter is scheduled to come out in early July, with Jean pulling that together for us. Be sure that you've signed up on the DPAC webpage if you want to receive our newsletter. The Municipal Bylaw Project was our next topic of discussion at the meeting. The plan here is to start with the top 100 municipalities in Canada by population and identify their drone-related bylaws. We're about 80% done, with the target to complete this basic inventory by the end of June. We'll then summarize each one into a concise sentence or two and put the whole thing into Drone Pilot Canada. That way, by tapping inside a municipal boundary, you'll be given a quick, unofficial summary of the area's bylaws and a link you can follow to read the details yourself. We'll also offer, well, sort of a crowdsourcing approach so anyone can contribute information about municipalities beyond the top 100. More on this once we have the feature out there. Now, knowing what the bylaws are is one thing. But the next obvious step would be to get the nasty ones changed. The idea is to offer a template to anyone who would like to approach their local council with a proposed improvement to the bylaw. A couple of forays into this are already happening. 
and success will undoubtedly result in a parade in honor of the intrepid leader of the change. Mike Hill shared his views on the Kingston Drone Discovery Day held on May 11th in terms of successes and learnings. He shared some of the challenges on the regulatory side since Transport Canada viewed the day as both a special aviation event and since the public was invited as an advertised event. By the way, I did a video of the Drone Discovery Day's highlights in case you missed it. Our next topic was a plan to do a survey of various drone-related issues to ensure we're still aligned with your views. Last time we did a survey, it turned out to be surprisingly expensive. So this time we're going to do the survey right within our highly popular Facebook group with one or two questions per week. Stay tuned for that. We talked about several other topics, but probably the most important was setting the agenda for our next quarterly Transport Canada meeting. That meeting will be on July the 10th, and we've, we've proposed discussing updates on the aviation radio issue, progress on the new regulations, of course, population density issues arising from a recent aviation circular, and a better understanding of how enforcement works. Well, that's it for now. I hope everyone is enjoying the early summer weather and getting out there to fly, whether you own a camera drone, FPV, or an RC aircraft. Safe and happy flying.